Breaking, look what Trump just sent to North Korea showing Kim Jong not to F with America. North Korean dictator Kim Jong un conducted another missile test this past weekend, despite President Donald Trump making it very clear previously that the United States will take decisive action if they conducted any of missile tests. As reported by Fox News, U.S. military believes Pyongyang launched an on minus 17 medium range ballistic missile, the first successful test in four attempts for the Pyongyang regime. The missile flew for four minutes longer than any previous ballistic missile test in the history of the communist regime, U.S. officials said. The non minus 17 is a single stage, liquid fueled missile, not the three stage, solid fuel missile that North Korea successfully tested back in February which caused more concern among Pentagon officials. The missile flew for half an hour and reached an unusually high altitude before landing in the Sea of Japan, the South Korean, Japanese and U.S. military said. Trump already proved that he is unafraid to respond to threats. Just a few months ago, not only did he drop the mother of all bombs on ISIS in Afghanistan, he also authorized 59 Tomahawk missiles to destroy an airbase in Syria used to drop chemical weapons on civilians. So the big question is how will President Trump and the United States respond to this threat? The Daily Mail reports the early actions of President Trump. A state-of-the-art Navy vessel designed to intercept ballistic missiles is set to be tested later this month. The MV Pacific Collector is being used to gather telemetry data for a new missile defense system. The new technology detects the missile via GPS and shoots out a vehicle which smashes into a warhead and mid-flight to disable it. Known as ground-based mid-course defense, the ship is in port at Aloha Tower in Hawaii for a key upcoming ballistic missile defense test. The news comes as North Korea test launched a ballistic missile that flew for half an hour and reached an altitude of 1,240 miles before landing in the Sea of Japan, a flight pattern that could indicate a new type of missile. The ship, measuring 393 feet long and housing 24-foot antennas, will be used in support of missions from the U.S. Missile Defense Agency missions, reported the Honolulu Star Advertiser. Spokesman Chris Johnson confirmed that the next flight intercept test is slated to begin towards the end of May. The test will not only be the first time a ground-based missile interceptor has launched from California, but it will be the first time that an intercontinental ballistic missile is on its way from the Pacific. Given that North Korea continues to test fire missiles rapidly, the new technology will be able to determine if upgrades are needed. Admiral Harry Harris head of U.S. Pacific Command, sent a bone-chilling warning to Congress, where he argued that Kim Jong-un is already in a position to threaten the peace and security of Hawaii today, and that they will soon be able to launch nuclear missiles anywhere in the United States if the threat is not detained immediately. As the Admiral pointed out, the Obama administration said the MV Pacific Collector had a low reliability rating in December of 2016. As many that serve this country reiterate, we cannot allow countries with dictators to become more powerful without strengthening our own systems at home. The ground-based system has a record of 9 out of 17 successful intercepts since 1999, or a 53% success rate. During a flight test conducted in January 2016, a defensive missile fired from California zeroed locked on a target missile launched from a C-17 cargo plane west of Hawaii, according to the Daily Mail. In addition to the Trump administration making it clear that our ships will use as many missiles as it takes to eliminate any threat from North Korea, they also announced that many sanctions will be administered on North Korea that will be crippling to their already struggling economy. The time for restraint and talks are over. No one is advocating for war, but the United States cannot allow this tyrant to continue making the world less safe. The North Korean dictatorship is not only a threat to the world, but their goal is to wipe the United States off the face of the earth. The Obama administration allowed this problem to fester for eight long years, and it is just one more mess Trump will have to address very soon. We must work with whomever is willing and do whatever it takes to ensure they cannot launch another missile capable of reaching the United States. Tough leadership is needed now more than ever, and Trump has proven he is unafraid to take decisive actions when they are crucial.
Having formed a great relationship with China, both nations could use military force to destroy all of the testing sites and compounds that North Korea relies on as well as place strident sanctions on them that will cripple their economy. Like the Cold War strategy, we could isolate them and cut off all their funding. Then they will learn Obama is no longer in charge, President Trump is, Trump is, bombshell, FBI agents risk their careers to expose Comey's sick crime. The real reason for Comey's firing was made clear by some brave FBI agents. Agents are speaking out against former FBI Director James Comey after President Trump fired him last week. Specifically, many agents are angered that the Clinton investigation did not result in charges. Two FBI special agents have released an interview transcript to the Daily Caller revealing they were appalled by Comey's decision not to press charges against Clinton, and questioned his leadership. We are not surprised. Comey left a trail of destruction at the FBI, and now it has to be cleaned up by President Trump and whoever he appoints as director. The two agents, who spoke to reporters anonymously, have certainly confirmed this. Furthermore, they claim that this is just the beginning, and that many more insiders plan on speaking out now that Comey is out of the picture. It seems that Comey wasn't nearly as well regarded within the FBI as some would have you believe. What offended agents the most was Comey's arrogance. When announcing that Clinton would not be charged, Comey referred to himself as an investigator while insinuating that other investigators agreed with the decision. However, Comey has never been an investigator, and he has never received the intense training required to be an FBI agent. Instead, Comey has been a lawyer and politician his entire career. Comey's lack of experience and political motives contributed to the botched investigation into Hillary Clinton. Agents described how typical investigation practices were ignored in this case. One agent described how the Clinton residence was never searched, and many devices were not seized, ignoring standard investigative practices. Even worse, Clinton was only interviewed after the decision was made to drop charges, and she never answered questions under oath people inside the bureau are furious. They are embarrassed. They feel like they are being led by a hack, but more than that, they think he's a crook. They think he's fundamentally dishonest. They have no confidence in him. The bureau inside right now is a mess, explained one of the agents. Comey undermined the FBI at every level. Neither the American people nor his own agents felt confident with Comey in charge. With Comey finally gone, now is the perfect time for President Trump to appoint a new FBI director who will take the Clinton investigation seriously. It is crucial that the public's trust and confidence in the FBI is restored. Do you think Comey protected Hillary Clinton? Please share the story on Facebook and tell us what you think because we want to hear your voice. Your voice, breaking, famous rock star just banned Trump voters from his concerts, it's sick. Multimillionaire celebrity liberals have made a point of speaking out against Donald Trump, who represents a clear threat to the pampered lifestyles they have led for far too long. Hollywood types like Meryl Streep, who are completely isolated from the lives of the regular Americans who watch their movies, never fail to try to attack and undermine Trump whenever they get a microphone near them. Now an aging rock star has just done the unthinkable and is actually risking lost whatever is left of his fan base by actually telling all Trump supporters not to go to any of his concerts because they will not be welcome. Todd Rundgren became famous in the 1970s for his radio-friendly rock hits like Hello, It's Me and clearly doesn't realize just how irrelevant he has become. Instead of begging anyone actually still willing to pay money to see him to come to his concerts, he just gave half of America the brush off. Rundgren is currently promoting his new album White Knight, on which he collaborated with Trent Reznor and Joe Walsh, and he was interviewed by Variety magazine. When he was asked if President Donald Trump and his voters anger him, he answered, No. If I had the power, I'd say, if you're a Trump supporter, don't come to my show, because you won't have a good time. And also, I don't understand your frickin' values. Because I'm not singing about that. If you don't understand that basic thing, you're just fooling yourself. On his new album, Todd and Donald Fagan of Steely Dan recorded a song about President Trump titled Man in the Tin Foil Hat.
For part of the song's lyrics, Rundgren sings, He's coming down the escalator with a girl from east of here because the man in the tinfoil hat is leading like a teenage girl. He puts the Pluto in plutocrat, he hasn't got time for losers, unless they do what he demands. Are you sick of irrelevant celebrities trying to make six smears against Trump? He puts the Pluto in plutocrat, he hasn't got time for losers, unless they do what he demands. Are you sick of irrelevant celebrities trying to make six smears against Trump? Trump, President Trump eats two scoops of ice cream, CNN is furious about it, you won't believe why. CNN will find any reason to psychoanalyze Trump, insult Trump and compare him to some horrible leader or event in history. They just reached a new low. President Trump recently ate two scoops of ice cream. This was enough to set off CNN. This huge story didn't just start with CNN. It was also reported by Time magazine. The waiters know well Trump's personal preferences. As he settles down, they bring him a Diet Coke, while the rest of us are served water, with the vice president sitting at one end of the table, wrote Time. With the salad course, Trump is served what appears to be Thousand Island dressing instead of the creamy vinaigrette for his guests. When the chicken arrives, he is the only one given an extra dish of sauce. At the dessert course, he gets two scoops of vanilla ice cream with his chocolate cream pie, instead of the single scoop for everyone else, they wrote. The president gets two scoops, you know, everyone around the table gets one, and no word if there were sprinkles, commented CNN's Brooke Baldwin in an interview about the ice cream. Right, well, the border point here is, the White House staff has adapted to Donald Trump's case. So, when everyone else gets water, he gets a Diet Coke. When everybody gets one scoop of ice cream, he gets two, said CNN political reporter Chris Siliza. Check out the video below. Video below.